No money, no maps, just beer. That's what our next guest used to barter trade his way across Asia. And his mission was to use the beverage in exchange for free rides that would get him from Inner Mongolia to Shanghai, then to Hanoi and finally Bangkok. And here to tell us all about his quirky adventures is the man himself, Justin Bratton. Morning, Justin. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good to Good be here. Good morning. Got to tell us how it works, though, first. I mean, so you got a, you got a bunch of beer in your backpack and you're just making your way as you go? Pretty much. Pretty simple concept. I mean, really, uh, I had a bunch of beer. There were certain checkpoints where I'd go to pick more beer up. But I had the pack of beer and I'd go along and just go out and talk to people and try and find my way and I'd use the beer as a way to just open up conversation and get them to warm up to me and beer is a great way to make friends with people so obviously in doing that I was able to kind of get by and get where I needed to go. It is but you managed to survive the whole two weeks just trading beer nothing else really? Well, I mean, obviously there's there's certain things like like flights obviously you're gonna have to right. utilize yes. some other means yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and then of course like Immigration, uh, I don't want to get arrested by right. trying to get through easy beer. <laughs> so there's certain little things like that. But I mean, everything everybody's seen on these, on these webisodes online, uh, all, the, all these interactions, everything that's happening, I mean, that's, that's me out there meeting interesting people, um, engaging them with mm. the beer in mm. my backpack mm. and just kind of figuring my way out. And mm. slowly as you meet one interesting person, it's like a domino effect and yes. you begin to meet more interesting people and these other interesting people it becomes almost this flow mm. that you hit okay. and using that beer as a kind of like a catalyst for it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean of course we know this is part of a, a larger marketing campaign for right. a beer company and so you've got a crew following you around as it happens. I mean, I mean it's I mean with the shots you guys were get you would think I had some sort of massive crew but I didn't it was just, it was just two guys with, with two cameras and um, and these guys are just they're just following me around. Right. I'm mic'd up, and they're just running around everywhere. And like, I'm doing something. All of a sudden, you see somebody like run by, and like out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, "What's he doing?" But he's busy trying to get this okay. this shot while okay. I'm doing my thing and talking to these. So, people. how did you plan your route? So, you, at the beginning, you sat down and you said, "Okay, can I get a map? I'll give you a beer." And then in exchange, <laughs> you got a map. Or, or well, I mean, the, uh, the the concept was uh, that I would use beer as social currency to, and to go down uh, Marco Polo's old spice trail. Right. which uh, goes from Inner Mongolia uh, down through Shanghai to Hangzhou, Hanoi, and then all the way to Bangkok. Mm -hmm. and that was just kind of the route we decided to mm -hmm. take, something historical, something interesting, a little bit more of an engaging concept to follow. Mm. Okay. As you went along, did you find it easier because you learned uh, a bit how to use your beer? As a, as Absolutely. A I mean, because I mean, they dropped me off in like, the middle of Inner Mongolia, and there was like, yeah. no people there. So it's a little overwhelming at first. You're just sitting there, and you're just kind of like, what, what do I do? Yeah. And then as, as you start to develop a bit of a, a methodology uh, to, to do things, right. it, things start to click about what to do, what to say. You start to learn to what people you can approach. And yeah, things definitely start to become quite a bit easier. Well, tell us what are some of these uh, quirky things to discover. How did you, what was your opening line now? I mean, oh, yeah. you, <laughs> <laughs> I was not necessarily any kind of uh, opening line per se, but it, it would just kind of be, um, you look for certain people, certain people that seem interesting, to really feel maybe want to talk and like have a beer and that kind of helps helps out as well obviously there's certain situations where you're around people that maybe don't seem approachable but the great thing about having the beer is you can go up to talk to somebody and if maybe if like there's a bit of a communication barrier okay. or something or they don't really seem to want to talk to you people tend to lighten up a bit when you pull out a beer and you're yeah. kind of like you know and, and, and almost using the novelty of it like yeah. you know I'm wasn't really speaking the language at all right. yeah, for the most yeah, part and yeah. people are a bit curious yes. and sure. they're interested and yes. you know you see something curious you want to explore what it is yeah. I think. Did they ask you for other drinks? Do you have any vodka? Any Actually, wine? No, they didn't. Like, uh, you know? People seemed pretty <laughs> impressed by, just by the fact I was willing to give them a beer. Like that was that was all. It really okay, did. so we got to ask you about your beer supply. So do you just have was it free flow? You could could you were you limited in the amount you gave to people? Uh, or you I mean, could decide how many bottles to trade for what? Well, I mean, obviously there was only a certain amount I could fit in the backpack yeah. without like killing myself. Yeah. Uh, so there's different uh, pickup points where I would go if I needed more beer. Um, and there really wasn't uh, any kind of amount that I would use to trade. It was just, you know, like, you know kind of gauge and mm. how many I needed. And mm. if I was having fun with somebody, maybe give them a couple more, right. you know, what, okay. whatever it took to Before we saw the, it. We saw a clip of you in Inner Mongolia on various forms of transport, and mm -hmm. we've also got um, another one as well. Uh, you were in Inner Mongolia, and you were you, f you were in a wrestling match, I believe. Tell us a bit more about that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. That, that <laughs> I was traveling around, a guys just giving me a ride, and just 
decides that I'm an interesting individual, that I should probably partake in some interesting cultural experience. Right. And uh, ended up in a match with these uh, Mongol Mongolian inter-Mongolian wrestlers. Yeah. And obviously, they were taking it quite easy on me. Right. Uh, look, there I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Having a good laugh. Yeah, I mean, they thought it was funny more than anything yeah. else, because obviously, I, I'm not a wrestler. I'm not a trained wrestler. These guys have been doing this their whole lives. Right. Oh, yeah, there I go. Bam. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, he, was, he was actually quite gentle. It looks right there that maybe he wants to injure me severely, but no, 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 no. I actually almost thought I had him there for a second. Yeah. Uh, he's just... Okay. He wants a more beer from you later on. I, is, he got it. But we got to talk about Shanghai as well because you needed to rent a bicycle and you know again the, the beer didn't quite cut it. They wanted you to do, do a bit more than um, that. You had to work selling fruit. Is that right? Yeah, that was actually in Hangzhou, Hangzhou, China. Uh huh. Right. Um, and yeah, um, yeah, they they were just kind of like I think they were just kind of ha trying to have a go at me. To be honest, uh, it was a good little situation for them to be in because they could kind of play with me. And they stuck me on this guy with fruit, just this friend of his had a bike with fruit. And uh, yeah, um, he just wanted me to hang out with him all day. Okay. <laughs> it was good fun. It was, it was interesting because I didn't really have any idea what he was wanting me to do. And I just driving around and uh, I mean, to be honest, we didn't really sell much fruit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. and. Uh, he got a couple beers out of it. So. Okay. it makes for good TV, nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We've got one more. What about Vietnam? You had to cross a large river where no boatman seemed to be uh, going in your direction. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, I don't know what was going on along this river exactly, but whatever it was, uh, was keeping people very occupied because they didn't really want to take time out of their busy schedule to go all the way across. And so inevitably, I had to just try and flag other people down and just hop. And uh, I was a little concerned about tipping over and losing my stash of beer, but fortunately that didn't actually happen. Okay, so we got to ask you, at the end of it all, so you finally made it through the whole trip. Uh, what, what experiences have you taken away from it? Uh, what would you... I mean, uh, overall, I, th I think the one thing, obviously, um, I mean, uh, we've all done traveling before, and we find ourselves in kind of these bubbles. We surround ourselves around a lot of f familiarities and... Uh, this trip with um, uh, the Passport.sg just kind of enabled me to, well, it forced me to have to really get out of that shell. Mm. I mean, because I was okay. in situations where I had to talk with other people just yeah, to yeah. really get where I needed to go. Okay. And it can and work, then, so it just shows that if we try a bit harder, sometimes absolutely. it just works. Yeah. All right, man. Thanks a lot for coming in. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Great to hear about your travels. Explorer Justin Bratton on his journeys across Asia using only beer as his current.